Good afternoon, everyone. I have the pleasure of welcoming you to our noon tunes today. And I don't even know if I'm in the screen. Yes, I am. There we go. Head north. Okay. Now we're good. It's a pleasure to be with you today at Noon Tunes, and uh, we decided we would start with music today. And I hope you enjoyed Mendelssohn's Lord, Now Let Us Thou Thy Servant Depart in Peace. The wonderful text of St. Simeon saying, I'm not ready to die until I see the Lord. And he did, and he realized that he did, and what a beautiful thing that was for him. And this next piece um, definitely needs a little bit of introduction. Now we're going back to the beginning of the program to a piece entitled, I Have Had Singing. And I don't think uh, anybody puts it better than the composer himself on the front cover of the piece. So I'm gonna actually take the time to read that to you. But we chose uh, this um, piece for today. We chose it as very much a theme for our term because we have had singing. And wow, are we happy with that reality. So um, we have titled an upcoming concert, I Have Had Singing, and we're, we know that we are very fortunate at King's that we have small enough groups here that we can somehow make it work with our beautiful masks and our HEPA filters and our social distancing and all the wonderful things that have prevented any of us from getting infected. And yes, we have had singing, and we welcome you to join us two weeks from now on a Friday night of March 26, when we're gonna sing our entire program for the entire year. All the music we've learned over the course of the year for both concert choir and chamber choir will be live streamed from this uh, very room. And you can get tickets online at um, Eventbrite. So there's information on our website about that. And I'm gonna just uh, end this short uh, spiel with this uh, little um, paragraph about I have had singing, so just give me a moment to find it here. In his book, Avonfield, Portrait of an English Village, Ronald Blythe records the life stories of the inhabitants of a tiny population of 298, East Anglican Village in Suffolk County, England. The names of the village and villagers have been changed, but the harshness, isolation, and beauty of their lives shine through their memories and observations. 74-year-old Davy remembers that 20 men and boys scathed the corn and sang as they went. What was the song, Blythe asked. Never mind the song. It was the singing that counted, came the reply. Fred Mitchell, an 85-year-old horseman plowman, recalls his difficult childhood as follows. I never did any playing in all of my life. There was nothing in my childhood, only work. I never had pleasure. One day a year, I went to Felix Stowe along with the chapel women and children, and that was my pleasure. But I've forgotten one thing, the singing. There was such a lot of singing in the villages then, and this was my pleasure too. Boys sang in the fields, and at night we all met at the forge and we sang. The chapels were full of singing. When the first war came, it was singing and singing all the time. So I lie. I have had pleasure because I have had singing.
Good afternoon, everyone. Isn't that beautiful to hear that music? My name is Charles Stolte. I'm the chair of the music department here at the King's University, and we welcome you to Noon Tunes. Noon Tunes runs as a very special part of the music department's offerings to the community every Friday at noon in, during the academic year. And we'd especially like to welcome uh, pros prospective students who are online watching this concert. We welcome you here and hope that it gives you a taste of the magic that is music at King's. It was one year ago when we had a Music King's View Friday and it was violently interrupted because the school was suddenly shut down due to COVID. So with that in mind and the need I'm informed that I have to speak a little longer than usual today uh, due to the cancellation of a couple performances. I would like to read from, to you from an article that appeared in the uh, Globe and Mail in December on uh, the day before New Year's. Uh, it's called Classical Music Gets Me Through These COVID Times, which kind of sounds like a blues, but uh, it's not. His name is Christopher White. All we know about him is that he lives in Whitby, Ontario. And I want to read you some passages out of this lovely article while I make time. He says, while it might be a slight exaggeration to say that classical music keeps me fully functional during this ongoing Twilight Zone experience of COVID-19, it does play a vital role in keeping my small ship upright. At first, like all of us in the before times, I was sure the changes in routine were just going to last a few weeks. So like many of you, I made sourdough bread and watched Tiger King on Netflix. But it didn't end in a few weeks, or even in a few months. There is, as of this day, no end in sight. It's changed a bit since New Year's, thank goodness. And we have collectively lost a whole way of life. Things like the ease of having friends over, meeting someone for coffee, or going out to dinner and a movie, or to the theater or a concert. It was during this extremely stressful time, he talks about his church being shut down all of a sudden, of course, when I was working nonstop that I noticed I could no longer listen to the constant stream of bad news. From the television to the radio to online feeds, it was a barrage of doom and gloom. I realized that I just couldn't keep listening to it. It was simply more than I could handle. That's when I migrated back to classical music. I started listening to it on my phone. I downloaded more and different albums and found it on the radio. Not only did I find that it acted as a soothing antidote to the stress and negativity of the pandemic, I discovered it engaged, it, it engaged me and I listened. Maybe for the first time, I really listened. Have you ever heard Beethoven's Ninth Symphony? It's extraordinary, and if you listen to the last movement along with the choir, soloists, and full orchestra, you will hear a triangle being played. Think about that for a moment. Beethoven wrote the Ninth Symphony when he was completely deaf. He wrote all the choral and solo parts and the parts for the orchestra, yet in his head he thought, it's not complete without the sound of a triangle. This massive work needs that tiny, tinkle of a triangle to be fully realized. It is amazing to hear that and think of his creative process. It's like Van Gogh painting while blind. I find it breathtaking. And that's what has captured me, he writes, the layers and complexity of classical music. It's the amazing combination of disparate instruments brought together to tell us a story in music. Each composer is so different each has their own signature, both the old and the new composers. They bring us music that engages mind and heart together. In the midst of the noise of loss that we are all experiencing, I have found a place to go that actually helps to ground me so I can thrive in a challenging environment. So I want to thank all the musicians and the composers who still create this special type of magic. Keep playing. It is helping more people get through these troubled times than you will ever know. Well, that's inspiring. 
if a little depressing to think back a year, but that is the power of music. As our professor of philosophy said yesterday in our systematic musicology class, classical music provides a space for meaning. And I thought that was perfection. And you can tell that's perfection too when you see how he dresses. Now I should say something about the next selection. It is a great piece for saxophone and organ performed by first year student Raphael Tien. He studies with me, I teach saxophone here. Um, but it is not performed live today. It was recorded earlier and will be put into the live stream by our spectacular concert manager, Kara Schlomp, and our administrative assistant, Micah Pavaroshnik. So there'll be some glitching and stuff. Uh, don't worry, the technical troubles are intentional and it will all be redeemed by some spectacular music. And so we're gonna start that process now. What a terrible ending to that speech. I'm Raphael Tian, a first year saxophonist studying under Dr. Charles Stolte, doing a BA in music. I'm graciously uh, very privileged to be accompanied by Professor Emeritus Dr. Joachim Seger on the pipe organ, and we shall present to you a Canadian piece by Denis Bedard, alto saxophone, a sonata for alto saxophone and organ. We hope you enjoy.
Hello everyone, my name is Maria Yamyuk and I'm a second year vocal student in the Bachelor of Music program studying under Elizabeth Raycroft. This is my accompanist Ariane Lowry and today we'll be performing Ritente la Calma by Mozart.
better. My name is Rigel Rendon, and I am a fourth year piano major studying under Dr. Leanne Regeer. And today I'll be playing Debussy's Gollywog's Cakewalk from um, Children's Corner Suite. It's always good to be reminded music is made by humans. Somehow that makes it that much better. Thanks for tuning in this week to Noon Tunes. We welcome you back next week with a new pr program of piano and pipe organ and voice. And please book a listening, a live stream listening for our concert of choirs on Friday the 26th of March at 7.30 p.m. on this exact channel. Tickets may be purchased through the King's University Eventbrite page. Just type in Eventbrite and King's University and you will be led to that spot. 
Thanks very much. Have a very fine weekend.